Whenever you want to optimize something, you need to know what to optimize. For that, you need to measure. One way of measuring we already learned, time it, which is available in IPython. But here I want to talk more about profiling in general. Who has done a profile before? Okay. Who does not know what a profile is? Okay. All right, good. <clears throat> in this context, at least the profile is um, the distribution of time a program needs for certain parts of the code. And I'm so vague about it because we'll look at the, this at different levels. Python comes with an inbuilt profiler. It's called the C profiler. It's a standard module. And it gives you a profile on a function level. That means every function that is called in my program will um, have an entry where I can see how much time was spent in that function, how often it was called in my program, how much time was um, spent in the function if I include or exclude all the functions that it actually calls. Often that's already a very good hint, but sometimes I want to be more specifically know what's happening within one function. And C profiler doesn't do that. For that, we have line profiler. Now, line profiler will give you actually line by line output um, of a function, but it also adds more overhead. There are also um, other tools like Internet Advisor that actually can generate profiles of Python, even mixed Python C code, which can be quite useful. Let's look at, at an example. Um, here we look at a simple particle dynamics code. I have some pair force between two particles. This could be, for example, um, the sun and the earth, and then it would be a gravitational potential, or it could be um, the, a proton and an electron, and then we would have a Coulomb potential, for example. Could be other potential forms as well. Um, so the pair force just defines the force between two particles. Um, the force here is the sum of all the forces from the other particles in the system on our probe particle. Calculate all forces, then does this calculates force for all particles. Once we have calculated all the forces, we, so actually forces are vectors, so they point in some direction. Then we accelerate our particle along this force and also move it along its previous velocity and the new force vector, the new acceleration. That we do in step, and um, part of step is that it should um, sorry, step I think is for an individual one and propagate all variables then does it for all of them. <clears throat> Our main program sets up a number of particles. Um, in this case, a thousand. Here I'm just using random.random, .random, which generates a uniform set of random numbers between zero and one um, for x, y, and z positions. Vx, Vy, Vy, Vz are um, the velocities, and my starting velocities here are all zero. And I set my mass of my particles just to one. So we have a thousand um, particles of mass one somewhere um, scattered in space. So what I need to do repeatedly is calculate the forces on all particles, then propagate all variables for a time step, and then continue at one. 
This is the basic algorithm for molecular dynamics, but also for astrophysical simulations of galaxies. These are the core elements. All right. Let's see how long this takes. So here I just do it for two steps. I calculate all forces. I propagate all variables along those forces. Um, so this is our baseline. Here yeah, I didn't do any profiling. I just measured actually how long my algorithm takes. This is quite important because profiling always adds some overhead. Some profiling methods only add a minimal overhead, but the more detailed my profile, um, the larger the tendency for overheads. This can be especially a pro become a problem if I have functions that are called very often, but are very short, because often each function call at some overhead in a profiling environment. So it's always good to have a baseline to see how fast does my code run without my profiling. So in this case, it was these 7.33 seconds. The C profiler is available from within the IPython notebook or Jupyter notebook with some magic, prun. Um, P run here is a cell magic. It has the two percent signs. And um, I'm initializing n steps to one here. So I'm doing this just a single time, doing the time step. Um, and here we have the, so first of all, here's the total time that we took. Overhead is fairly small, that is nice. And here we can now see which functions were called most frequently and how much time we spent in that function. Um, so we have pair force. We spend 4.925 seconds just within that function, not um, including calls to other functions from within there. Um, so this would be our most important function. Then force, it's called a thousand time, would be the next time one to look at, and so on. Well, we probably won't do much about NumPy array, although this gives us a hint that we might be generating too many arrays in here. This can be intermediates that might, one might want to get rid of, especially if it shows prominently within the profile. All right. So now that we have identif identified the function that takes most of the time, we can do a line by line profiling on that function. To do that, we first need to load an extension. So I, uh, Jupyter, or IPython kernels actually, can be extended um, with new functionality by load ext. In this case, we load the um, prof line profiler. And now we can actually look at a line by line assessment of our function. And unfortunately, my slide is just not tall enough. So all you see here is actually my documentation string, my doc string. We can see that we basically get the same information. We see how often we ran that line, um, how much time we spent in there, how much time per call, and what the percentage of the total runtime of this function is. And you'll see that in the notebooks when you do it in a second. Um, now, you'll see that some of the core routines in this is actually calculating the distance between two particles. 
That's a fairly expensive operation that includes a square root. Square roots are expensive in general. Much more expensive, at least, as, than plus and minus. So let's take this distance calculation apart. First of all, I need to do the differences in x, y, and z. And this line up here is just used to initialize the time it actually only runs on this x1 minus x0. And it takes us 58.4 nanoseconds. So here again, we did lots of repetitions, 10 millions this time, to get an accurate number here. All right, so I need to square this. I need to do dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared and take the square root of that to get the, the distance. Um, so if I use the square operator, it takes 245 nanoseconds. But this is just a multiply. This seems rather expensive. So what if I actually wrote this out? x1 minus x0 times x1 minus x0, and this is actually significantly faster. This may be due to the fact that this operator is actually very general. It doesn't just work for square. It's not a specialized function for square, but it could say um, 3.1415 and would still work. So this is actually a generic power function here, and here I'm explicitly using multiplication. Okay, so, well, of course now I'm calculating the difference twice. If this were compiled, this wouldn't be an issue. Um, every compiler is smart enough to calculate this once, and then multiply it with itself. But we are not using a compiler. We are using an interpreter. So maybe I should first calculate dx and then take dx times dx. And actually, yes, that gets me down to 111 nanoseconds. So here we went from really a fairly top level view, where we're looking at the functional level, um, down to individual instructions. And this is not untypical for profiling and optimizing things. Um, and so that you get the chance to actually run through those profiles yourself, we have the appropriate notebook, and that's calling, uh, called Profiling a Simple MD Simulation.